saints that God is a miracle God. And everybody that turns to him and believes in him, God works miracles for them. I'm going to talk to you about a miracle time when every hope there was was lost. The reason I'm doing this is because we're facing so many crisis problems in America that it's no wonder that so many people are failing God. Um, we have a group of people that I call Sinos, C-I-N-O. They're Christians in name only. Like when they fill out an application, what they check Christian. Doesn't mean they go to church, doesn't mean they love God, doesn't mean they have an experience with God. They just uh, don't know what else to write there. But I have to tell you right now, there are real Christians in America. There are real Christians in this world. There are born-again people. There are people who would not bend down, bow down, submit to any other God. And I want to assure you right now that our God is the real God. That Jesus Christ is the only name I know for him. Everything else is just a title. I know people say they believe in Jesus Christ and they honor him as a prophet. And I tell those folks that believe that Jesus is a prophet, why don't you do what the prophet says? Stop telling me you believe. Start doing what the prophet says. I wish these children of Israel here in Exodus, the 14th chapter, that's where I'm going to be preaching at. I wish I really did that they had the scripture in Ephesians 3.20. Maybe you need this scripture here today. Here's what it said. He is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Of course, if a Christian doesn't have any power working in him, he doesn't even know what this means. People who don't read the Bible, study the Bible, hold on to God's Word, have no clue about what real religion is and salvation is. They don't know the difference between religion and salvation. You can do anything religiously. I guarantee you everybody here does one or two things religiously. You sleep and you eat. You, do the, you wouldn't miss a day without doing that. Huh? That's what religion is. It's doing something repeatedly. Only religion takes one other note to it. It wants you to also throw God in there. And you do that religiously. Some people go to church religiously. Some people don't do anything religiously. But there's a difference between that and salvation. I'm not a, I'm not a religious person. But I do have salvation. And you can hogwash this all you want to and try to cut it down uh, with whatever uh, other belief system you want to, but Jesus Christ is Lord, Jesus Christ is King, Jesus Christ is in charge, and everybody else that tries to take any power, any glory away from him, they're all just liars. There you have it. Thank you. How many said God bless you? I'll get, an, I'll get a God bless you out of you one way or the other. <laughs> Here's my scripture in Exodus 14. When, this is verse 10, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. I guess that means very afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt. You mean there, there wasn't enough graves in Egypt? That you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not the word that we did tell you in Egypt saying...
let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness I don't know how that makes you feel but this kind of upsets me there are some people that sell their soul for a loaf of bread you don't think so read about Esau and Jacob uh, they sold his soul for a mess of beans pottage we have guaranteed programs in America and in this world to get people to sell your soul they want you to sell out they want you to start believing in things that aren't scriptural that are against God and if you go along with them they'll make sure you have a place to live they'll make sure you have food to eat they'll make sure you have a telephone they'll make sure you have an education even though they're not educating you in the truth they're giving you their truth and people will go right along with that they'll get to the point where they'll turn around and deny Jesus Christ even though grandma drug them to church every Sunday morning they'll turn their back on the Lord and they'll accept something else that's not even true it's called secular humanism they got a different doctrine out here it's, they don't call it a gospel they call it politics and I'm going to tell you right now anybody that's against Jesus Christ is against me and I'm not for them don't let anybody fool you into thinking that this church will ever bow down or submit to anything that's against the word of God I'll not do it I'll go a little bit farther than that don't think they're going to drag me away easily Amen. if they come after me they better bring their lunch Amen. it's going to be an all day affair Amen. hallelujah because I ain't giving up and all of these wimpy preachers that tell you you've got to submit and bow down, they're lying to you. Don't submit. Don't bow down. Don't act like you're serving this doctrine that's in the world. I don't do it. If you want to know where I stand, read the Bible. Don't read a book about the Bible. Read actually the Bible. That's what I believe. But listen to this. Listen to what they were saying these children of God now listen to this in the wilderness God had just worked 10 great miracles for them right in front of their eyes God promised to send them a, a deliverer God sent them a deliverer and when the deliverer got there they were so shocked that the prophecy was actually true I'm going to tell you right now, a lot of people are going to be shocked in this generation because God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh and, it, huh? and some people are going to be shocked by that. They'll say, well, God said He was going to do it and my God, here He's doing it. God is getting ready to do it. I, I, I believe everything that the Word of God says and, and when you see the prophecies being fulfilled and coming to pass, don't be shocked by it. Instead, praise God for it. 400 years, God said he was going to send somebody to the children of Israel in Egypt who was going to deliver them and lead them into the promised land given to Abraham, their father. And so what happened? Here comes Moses, and Moses all of a sudden starts working miracles in front of them. And they're happy for a minute. And then they turned around when they get out there and they're at the Red Sea, and they see God, uh, the armies of Pharaoh coming after them. And when they see those armies coming after them, all of a sudden they begin to say, What, you brought us out here to die, Moses? There, weren't, there wasn't enough graves over there in Egypt land of us, and, and you brought us out here? But we could have served the Egyptians. We told you. Isn't that, some, that, that ain't no argument, by the way, for somebody to say, I told you this would happen. That don't mean nothing to me. Well, we told you. They said, we told you. Didn't we tell you? Didn't we tell you in Egypt? Didn't we tell you this? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt? Saying, leave us alone. We had rather be in bondage. 
I got news for you right now. There are people here in this country that would rather be in bondage if they think everything's going to go on like it has been going on. But don't you understand what bondage is? Bondage means you can't do what you want to do. You do what they tell you to do. You can't go where you want to go. You go where they send you. Well, me, I am what God says I am, and I'm going to do what God tells me to do, and I'm going to say what God tells me to say, and I'm going to be what God wants me to be. Huh? And my uncle used to say, even if it hair lips the devil. Hmm. Couldn't you left us? We'd rather been slaves. Huh. We'd rather been in Egypt. Land. We told you this. Leave us alone, and we'll serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in this wilderness. And oh, look at what Moses says now. Listen to this. A prophet comes along and says something like this. This ain't just words I'm saying here. This is the word of God that I'm saying to you. Listen carefully. Huh? Moses said unto them, to the people, Number one, fear ye not. I'm going to tell you as a Christian here in this country right now, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Don't fear. What? This says here, stand still. But what? Now the second thing is stand still in verse 13. But it means stand upon the word. I'm telling you not just to stand here and do nothing. I'm telling you to stand on the word. Stand on the word. Stand on what God told you. Stand on what you know to be the fact from the word of God. Let God be true and every man a liar. God's word is true. Stand on that word. Then, number three, you will see the salvation of the Lord which he will show you today. I'm going to tell you, I've had a lot of prophecies in my life. I've heard a lot of them in church. I've seen people get overcome by their own zeal to prophesy. But I'm going to tell you what this prophecy is here. God's going to bring it to pass. God is going to deliver us right in the presence of our enemies. They're going to see it. They're going to know it. They're going to see the power of God moving in the house of God, in the house of prayer, and we're going to know immediately everybody that's living for God. You know, it says several times here in, in the book of Exodus, everybody on the Lord's side, come over here. We don't even have to worry about that. We're going to know who's on the Lord's side by what they say in church. If they back up on the word of God and they retract and they say it really don't mean what it says, I'm going to tell you right now, God is separating those people from the body of Christ. You can't just say I'm a believer anymore. Now, you not only are you going to have to say you're a believer, you're going to have to bring to pass the salvation of the Lord. You're going to have to work a miracle somewhere. God's a miracle worker. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. You're a believer, and we're going to know that you're a believer because of the miracles that follow you. Hallelujah. Hmm. Here's number th uh, four. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall never have to deal with them again. Wouldn't it be good to get finally rid of some problems that have been after you all your life? Wouldn't it be nice to see the last day that you're going to have to fight with them? Well, if God kills all of them, you don't have to worry about them anymore. You say, Brother Ross, God won't do that because God is the God of love. You know who's telling you that? Your enemies are telling you that. I can say God is a, is a God of love. They can't tell me God is a God of love because they're manipulating the word of God. Don't you tell me what a Christian is. You have to be a Christian before you can tell somebody what a Christian is. If you ain't a Christian, don't tell me how to live for God. I know God. Hallelujah. Me and him's friends. Come on here, church. Say amen. You know God. The Lord, look at verse 14 here. I can't get a lot of people to go along with this, but it says here that the Lord will fight for you. Woo! Hallelujah. That makes chill bumps run up and down my hikamosai, hallelujah, and shandai. The power of God is in us. Don't be afraid. 
Don't turn around. Don't think God is going to leave you somewhere. And then listen to this in verse 15. I, I got other translations of this here. I want to read some of them to you. Here is my, face, my, my favorite. Listen to this. Moses, are you laying on your face? <laughs> are you crying, Moses? Tell the Israelites, get up. Get moving. You know what kind of message I got for you today? There it is. Why cry? Get up and get moving. Come on, church, say amen. What's crying done for you? Huh? You wasted a lot of time crying. Now shut up. Don't come around here whining and wimping around me. You, you're the child of God. You're the children of God. You have faith and you have power. Stop, stop telling me all the well the devil did this I don't care what the devil did that's what the devil does Amen. hallelujah are you crying about that get up off of your face all right, you know I heard that song the other day get up out of your seat <laughs> get, get up <laughs> I wish I could sing hallelujah I'd be a singer the thing is child I can sing but hey yeah <laughs> I I sing a different kind of melody. Hallelujah. The thing is, child of God, you and I have to realize that you are the children of God. Listen, I am the son of God. I am born again. I'm not, I'm not denying my earthly family, but now I've got a heavenly family, and God is in my family. God's in my family. God's in your family. He's not a stranger, lives in a house up on a hill somewhere. God is in your family. He is your father. God is my father. I'm a brother with Jesus Christ. I'm a joint heir with the Lord. And so are you. You're a joint heir of Jesus Christ. What he has, you know what that means? What he has, you got it too. What's the matter with us? Wimping and crying around here like we ain't got no help and those sorry wrist limp preachers on television that all they do is reinforce that well don't worry we're going to leave here before the devil comes around why did God give you the Holy Ghost for? did God give you the Holy Ghost to fight the devil? how many got the Holy Ghost? What God give it for you? What did he give you gifts of the Spirit for? What did he give you the whole armor of God for? To take you out of here before the battle happens? God gave me a sword of the Spirit. I'm ready to fight. Hallelujah. God gave me the shield of faith. He gave me a breastplate of righteousness. He gave me a helmet of salvation. I'm ready to fight. Hallelujah. But here it says, you get ready, but God's going to fight the battle. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm looking for a fight. I ain't laying down on my face no more. Hallelujah. I ain't crying no more. It ain't crying time for me. It's shouting time. How we ought to get the church turned around here instead of praying, oh God, don't let them kill us. Hallelujah. You ought to start looking at what God's getting ready to do. Somebody wrote me in and said, well, I'm going to send you a copy of this, how uh, Islam is going to take over America. I said, well, wait a minute. I, I, I'm writing a book right now how God's going to take over Islam. You want to read mine? You want to read my book? Hallelujah. I, you know, I've got to tell you, child of God, you've got to start believing in the power of the Word of God. If God did it before, God will do it again. And if God never did it, he, he's not going to do it now. But we have the Word of God telling us what God has done and how he has delivered his people. Don't sit there and cry any longer. It's time for you to stand up in the power of the Spirit of God and say, I am what God says I am. And I can do what God says I can do. All of a sudden, when God speaks, he, give, huh? he gives you action to take. He tells you, go! No. <laughs> Stand up. Yeah, well, go for it. Yeah, <laughs> go forward. You can go for it too. Hallelujah. He also gives you a direction to go. He said, go forward. Don't turn back. Don't turn back to what you used to do. I'm telling you, church, there's too many people got a turn back spirit. Huh? 
Uh, uh, they didn't get exactly what they wanted here and so they're going back to all of those dead denominations again Think because there's order and structure there uh, they want to go back to Egypt because they, make, they tell you what time to get up they tell you what you do all day long they tell you when to eat and they tell you when to go home and go to sleep yeah, is that what you want? go to one of these structured places Huh, where all they do the word of God says fear not and stand on the word and you'll see the salvation of God hallelujah number one go forward and the Lord will fight for you sit here and the Lord ain't going to do nothing for you huh, go back and God's not going to move for you you got to go forward in the spirit you ought to be growing in God right now love casts out fear get rid of your fear huh, love for God I don't believe it's love for the heathen I believe it's love for God. You love God and it, you won't be afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. And faith does the impossible. Moses said to the people, Fear ye not, stand ye still, see the salvation of the Lord, which he'll show you today. Number one, have faith. Number two, stand on the word. Number three, God will fight for you. Amen. I mean, like God to fight some of your battles. Well, I'm going to give you one little clue. Listen carefully you got to get out of that boat with the whiners and doubters and powders. Amen. Don't sit there in that boat with them. Like Peter, you're going to have to say, Lord, I'm coming. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk on the water with you. Huh? If you start murmuring like it is here in verse 11 and 12, every believer must realize that murmuring against God and his servants is a sin. Well, I just don't like how the pastor is doing that. I don't like how brother so-and-so, I don't like how sister so-and-so, I don't like what they said. I, I don't know if God can be in a church like that where they do stuff like that. You murmuring? God will kill you in the wilderness. You're going to die along the wayside. Your bones, will they walk by? Who is that? Well, that's that murmurer. Remember her? <laughs> that's that mur murmurer. Remember him? I recognize him by his, uh, the clothes he has on. He laying there dead, murmuring. Murmur, 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 murmur. What a perfect word describes what they do. Murmuring. I'm just murmuring. You murmurer. Satan the Lord rebuke that murmuring spirit in you. Murmurers cannot please God and can never gain the loving favor of God. You can't do it as long as you're talking against God and talking about God's servant. I tell you, you better not talk about Moses. It's not a good thing, not a good idea. Don't criticize anybody in this word of God. And if you see somebody doing anything for God, you bless them. Amen. You may not agree with everything they say, but say, God bless you, hallelujah. Somebody trying to get me to talk bad about Benny Hinn. And I'm going to tell you something. Benny Hinn's gone places and preached the gospel. I, I ain't never been. I ain't never been to Iceland. I flew over there once. Pilot said, there's Iceland down there. And I said, oh, okay. He went there and held a revival meeting. He had almost half the people on the island there in, in the one city. They were all there. They, they didn't have an auditorium big enough. I'm, God bless him. Somebody said, well, that Reinhard Bonnke in Africa, he's not doing anything. He's not preaching the real gospel. I'm going to tell you, I ain't seen many people preach to two million people at the same time. You want to know how big his speakers are that reach that crowd? They're as big as this platform, and they're stacked one on top of another. They got speakers so big that he don't even know where to get them made. He has to make them himself. You stand out there in front and your skin just vibrates <laughs> with a sound coming out of there. <laughs> they take the dead down there and put them in front of the speakers and it shakes them back to life again. Come on, say amen. <laughs> that dead spirit comes back in there. Wow, I felt that. Hallelujah. God bless him. God bless you, you testifying for the Lord. If you ain't doing nothing, you on your own. Tell somebody about Jesus. What, are you ashamed of Jesus? Somebody told me, we pray five times a day. I said, I pray all day long. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't turn toward Mecca either. I look up. Hallelujah. That's where my God lives. Hallelujah. You need to understand something. Stop murmuring and complaining about what somebody else is doing. 
why are you sitting still and letting them do it? We, I'm telling you, Christianity has the answer. Why aren't we telling everybody about it? Huh? We'll get on the telephone and talk about everything else, but I'm going to talk to you about Jesus here today because I know Jesus is the answer for the world today. You sinning, he'll save you. You lost, he'll find you. You sick, he'll heal you. You bound by demons, and if you're bound by something, that means you're not free from everything. Hallelujah. You need to get free from everything and serve God because Jesus is alive here today. His power is real. I'm preaching good. Hallelujah. I can't even reach my back to pat on it. Hallelujah. You should have left us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. I'm going to tell you something. If God tells you he's going to do something for you, you've got to walk in the freedom that God gives you. You say, wait, wait a minute. The Lord said he's going to set me free, and then when God sets you free, what are you going to do? <laughs> you ought to accept it, right? God say, your prophecy comes, you're going to be set free, and then when God sets you free, what are you murmuring about? Ha! Hallelujah. You remind me of one of my uncles. His wife kept praying. <laughs> that he'd get saved and come to the Lord and he came in and got saved one day and went home and his wife didn't like him anymore. <laughs> she went to the pastor and said, this ain't the same man I married. She said, and the pastor said, no, he got saved. <laughs> you better learn how to live with, uh, with the blessing that God gives you. Hallelujah. Uh, don't be panicked. You got, the Christians, uh, listen, I'm telling you right now, Christians are not feeble, we're not senile, and we're not stupid. There is an arrogant demon in America. This arrogant demon will say things to you like this. If you don't have a college education, you're stupid. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Dizzy Dean said it for me. A lot of people who ain't saying ain't, ain't eating. <laughs> when they criticized him for saying ain't on the radio, he said a lot of people who ain't saying ain't, ain't eating. So it has uh, your education. Uh, uh, how, many, how many students in America are taking a political science degree? If you're not going to get hired by the government, you, what are you going to do with that? So I got a college education. Well, what do in what? What did you learn how to do? Most people come out of college don't even know how to do anything, except party and drink beer and go to spring break. That's what they teach in most colleges nowadays: how to have a good time. You away from home, move into the dormitory, where they got men and women living together. That's college. I got news for you right now. If that's edu edumacation, I don't think I want any of it. The Bible's against that. And you've got these people who will look down at you because you, don't, you didn't go to one. Listen, there, there's only, if you didn't go to one of these five schools in America, they think you're ignorant. Four of them on the East Coast, one of them on the West Coast. If you didn't go to one of those colleges, they think you're ignorant. I got news for them right now. You don't have to even go to school to be smart. Huh? If you learned how to read, you, I, I've got a better education than most of those people that went to Harvard and Yale and Princeton and MIT. Some of you have a better education than they do. You say, well, college is a specialized school. And I, and I said, I know. You go there and learn everything about nothing. If you've been going to church and reading your Bible, you're probably an expert on Scripture. Don't let the devil minimize you. You know the Word of God. Just because you don't believe in Darwinism and because you don't believe in some of these other stupid things that they come up with in order to extort money from taxpayers. And you know what I'm talking about. I, we voted it down here. They told everybody it was about safe roads, and none of it had anything to do with safe roads. Everybody read that one. How come we don't read all of these other lies? Anybody believe you came from a one-cell creature that's climbed up out of the slime 
180 million years ago and you finally worked your way up through tadpoles and amphibians and, and then uh, got into warm-blooded creatures and finally you came here as a man? If you can believe that, my God, I got some good oceanfront property in Colorado I'd like to sell you. And they say, if you don't believe, well, it's settled science. We're not even going to argue about this anymore because this is the only way it could happen. They say that about global warming. Huh? They sent a, a, a ship up there to Antarctica to go test global warming, how much of the ice pack has melted, and it's frozen in. It's locked in by ice. Yeah, figure that out. How to, how to, tell me how that's melting out for you. Hallelujah. The truth is, child of God, I don't believe in the education system. You want to know what education and educated scientists have done? They've given us so many diseases, we don't even have them cataloged anymore. Has anybody ever heard of anything like the AIDS virus? I can tell you the date it happened. Look on the internet. Some people trying to find a cure for uh, polio before Jonas Salk found his vaccine. Uh, they're the ones who created the AIDS virus. And here we've been blaming it on everybody else. It was a bunch of Belgian scientists that did that. You say, well, Brother Ross, you, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, they, the scientists told us that. And what about the Ebola virus? Anybody ever hear of that before 25 years ago? Where'd that come from? Huh? I got to tell you something. You start messing with some things in nature, you're going to reap the reward of it. You start killing your children, you start aborting your children, you're going to reap the, re the benefit of that, and the benefit is not what you think it is. Right now, I'm telling you, the, one of the biggest shames and tragedies, and everybody say it's a woman's right. I got news for you right now. There ain't nobody got a right to kill anybody. Huh? There ain't nobody got the right to take another life. My God, I don't even kill animals anymore. I'm ashamed of myself for killing so many. I killed everything that walked or run or flew. But I don't do that anymore. I have too much respect for that. You ought to have some respect too. If, you, if, you, if we can pass a law that protects an eagle's egg, how come we can't pass a law that protects an unborn child? California's in a drought right now because they don't want to kill a little bitty minnow that big called a snail darter. Huh? They, they shut down the California aqueduct. That, huh? Uh, you, you know, these people are going to get hungry. They better be raising a lot of food outside this country because uh, Fresno, California, that Fresno County raises one third of all the food that's eaten in America. And now they shut off the water to it. There's a, uh, the drought is not because there hadn't been any rain. Huh? The drought is because of dumb politicians. And the scientists said this. Well, you've got to watch out here because you're, huh? you're not going to have any water to drink. They're, gonna, they're planning on dra draining the Great Lakes here and sending the water out here to these people that they've already messed up their, their, their states. You've got to understand something here. Without God on your side, without God on your side, without where would you be if God had not been on your side? Where would you be right now? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm on God's side. God is on my side. God is on the inside. He's working on the outside. I've got a power around me and the devil can't break through it because it's called the hedge of God, the fence of God. Jesus has become a fence all around you. The devil can't get to you at all if you believe in Jesus Christ. Number two, go forward and God will do miracles for you. You've lived all your life waiting for a prophecy to be fulfilled. The revelation of that fulfillment can be a shock to you. You can turn around and say, well, this is actually happening. For years and years and years, they prophesied that there was going to come a great falling away in America and the Antichrist was going to come to this country and try to set up a kingdom here. And now that it's happening, most people deny it. They say, oh, that's not what's happening here. 
and here we see it happening I'm telling you right now, child of God, we have to get on fire for God. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Huh? Seeing a miracle is not nearly as good as being a part of a miracle. This is a wonderful thing about God. God wants you to be a part of this miracle that's getting ready to happen in this country. God hadn't brought us this far to leave us. God hadn't brought us out here in this wilderness to turn his back on us now. God hadn't let all of these things happen around us in order to desert us. God didn't bring us out here to die. God didn't bring us into this world to let us go and turn us loose. Instead, just like Jonah, God said, Jonah, I'm not going to just save people in Nineveh. I want you to go there and preach to them you got to be part of this miracle. Hallelujah. The disciples, Jesus didn't say to them, I'm going to send my word and heal everybody. He said, I'm going to give you the power of healing the sick and casting out devils. You go into all the world and be my witnesses. God wanted them to be a part of the miracle that's going to happen. It's no different today. God is wanting to anoint you. God is wanting to fill you. God is wanting to give you power. God is wanting to give you anointing and send you forth to become a part of this miracle because this whole nation is going to bow their knee to Jesus Christ. It's going to happen and God is going to anoint you to do the job. Listen, I've studied other religions all my life. I've been everywhere. I, I wasn't content to study some of them here because I was afraid it might get diluted. So I went to where it started. Huh, dozens of religion. You tell me why. You, here I am, convert me. Not one of them heals the sick. They'll kill you. Come on, say amen. But they don't heal the sick. Huh? Did you know in some of their religious books, they don't have any terms for love of God and love of your fellow man at all. Instead, they, it's all about kill them if they don't bow down. Listen, I'm telling you the truth here. Huh? What we have is something that the world does not have. You know what we have? We have the power to change your, a person's life on the inside. We have the power to make a drunk push his cup away and stop drinking that mad dog. Hallelujah. We have the power on the inside of us to make the drug addict throw his crack pipe away and stop puffing on, on the weed. Hallelujah. We have the power of the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us to make an unvirtuous woman turn her back on sin and go and sin no more. We have the power living on the inside of us to pick a drunkard up out of the gutter and shave him and clean him up and dress him up and send him forth to preach the gospel. We have the power to drug a drug dealer around and make him stop selling what he's selling and instead become a preacher, preaching the word of God, convincing the world of sin. We have the power to do that. Every other religion only teaches you how to kill. Jesus didn't say, I came to bring you death and that more abundantly. Jesus said, I came to bring you life and that more abundantly. Look, Jesus don't want you to die for him. Jesus wants you to live for him. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Some of you don't need 72 virgins in heaven. You can't even handle one woman down here. I'm praying if they get up there that all of them 72 virgins are nuns. Hallelujah. With a ruler in their hand. <laughs> Come on, say amen. <laughs> you and I, child of God, we got to be a little humorous about this because I make fun of the devil every time I get an opportunity. Listen here, church. Listen carefully. If the devil has any power, let him kill me here right now standing in front of you. If the devil can do it, Come on, take your best shot. I sure wouldn't say that about Jesus. I wouldn't say that to God. He has the power of life and death, but so do I. The power of life and death, where is it? 
What are you talking right now? Are you talking defeat or are you talking power and faith in God? Are you talking yea, Lord? Or are you saying nay, Lord? Hallelujah. You're saying one or the other. You're either saying yes or you're saying no. You're either full of the Holy Ghost or you're full of doubt and fear and wonder and what's going to happen in this world. You got Holy Ghost power on the inside of you. There is nothing the devil can do to discourage you, hold you down. And Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You windbag, can't you see? We can't go anywhere, we're trapped. That's the Red Sea in front of us. Don't let your faith wander here. Don't begin to doubt. Don't be full of fear and doubt. The miracle is not too great for God. Hallelujah. Sarah is anything too hard for the Lord she could have said yeah I'm 98 year, 99 years old you think I can have a baby at my age is anything too hard for the Lord oh well they're invading our country is anything too hard for the Lord they're defeating us all over the world is anything too hard for the Lord they're beheading Christians is anything too hard for the Lord I'll tell you what one major difference is they didn't get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and so they'll kneel down and let that happen but you got the Holy Ghost of God on the inside of you I'm telling you God will send an army of angels to defend you because greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world what do you think about that, devil? What's living on the inside of me? Hallelujah. There's more than a heart and lungs in here. There's something living on the inside. There's something inside me. Sometimes I feel it way down deep in my body. Sometimes it's just like fire shut up in my bones. Sometimes I feel it like a warmth poured over me. Sometimes I just get an elated spirit in my mind. Sometimes I begin to think higher thoughts. Hallelujah. And I know it's God on the inside. God is on the inside of you. Don't minimize this because the devil cannot duplicate it. Oh, the devil can duplicate the shout. He can do the same thing. Huh? Devil can duplicate a lot of things in the church. He can even teach a parrot how to speak in tongues. I know I had one. I did that. I come walk, I found. <laughs> First time I was in Corpus Christi, Texas with A.A. A. Allen, he showed me the church that he built, and they uh, <laughs> let you know how fleeting and how transitive everything is he put a plaque a bronze plaque on the church this church dedicated by A.A. A. Allen the pastor on this date and they went out there with a torch and burned his name off <laughs> that's, that's some hate in there hating on him and so we went to see that and I took a picture of him standing beside it we just died laughing and said, oh, well, they, really want, they really don't like you now <laughs> he said no they'd never like anybody preaching the gospel healing the sick they never like anybody casting out devils. And so here we uh, go out there and we're sitting on the beach in Corpus Christi. It's beautiful there, white, beautiful sand. It's gorgeous. Uh, they don't talk enough about how beautiful it is. We were right there at, uh, uh, near Aransas Pass, and uh, uh, it's really beautiful there. And uh, a flock, a flock of parrots green and gold and red and yellow a flock of them came flying over and they were just I mean making all kinds of noise and I, I said brother Allen I've never seen that before those things sell for a thousand dollars in pet stores and here they're just flying around free here one of them came buzzing around like that and landed in a tree right there beside me palm tree I said look at that so I go walking over there, and I'm talking to this parrot. You looking at me? On, you know, got to turn his head because they only see out one way. I talked to him right down out of that tree. He sat there on that table. I was feeding him French fries. Brother Allen said, you, "That thing will bite you." I said, "He ain't gonna bite me." Here, you know, I'm, he's biting these French fries though. He was eating them things, enjoying it, and he had talked. I don't know what he's saying. It's parrot language. I didn't speak that. And we got in the Jeep to, to go back to the tent, and 
that parrot came along and flew and landed right there in, in the back seat. I said, he's going with us. Brother Allen said, I don't want that thing in, in, around us. Get rid of that thing. I said, I won't keep him in the house. And so he jumped up on my shoulder when we stopped. And I took him out there to the book stand, and I got him off my shoulder and set him on the book stand. And he just sits there, and he goes moving back and forth, moving back and forth. And I told uh, uh, Billy K. Basil that was there running the book, I said, just give him uh, you know, something to bite on every once in a while. He'll be happy. And she did. He stayed with us almost that whole week. Pretty soon, though, Brother Allen was all right with him, and he was in, in the trailer house. I put him up there on a the thing, and he'd, he'd stay there at night. He'd right there near my bed he'd just sit in there and he'd uh, he'd come when I came in he'd fly get on my shoulder and go right in with me and I'd set him in there and <clears throat> one day I said how are you doing this morning I called him brother Shamba <laughs> I said how are you doing brother Shamba <laughs> and here he goes off speaking in tongues that parrot did I said where did you learn that at I knew where it was. He was there in church so much that he heard people speaking in tongues. He just picked it up. So there's a difference between being full of the Holy Ghost and just speaking in tongues. I never saw that parrot cast out any devils. <laughs> but it could speak. I was waiting for him to start prophesying. Then I was going to leave myself. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so I walked out. I walked there when we was getting ready to leave Corpus, and uh, he was on my shoulder. And I looked up at him and I told him, I said, "You know, we're going north. It's going to get cold there." And so he, okay. So he flew off. I never saw him again. Wouldn't that? Wasn't that funny? Do things like that ever happen to you? I mean. <laughs> I mean, you can teach anything to do anything, but there's a difference between that and the Holy Ghost baptism because the tongues is not the main evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You want to know what is? It's power. Who's got the power? A lot of folks talking in tongues today that can't do nothing for God. But if you've got the real baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can walk on water, cast out devils, turn water into wine, cleanse unpure people. Hallelujah. What other miracles can you do? Multiply loaves and fishes. Hallelujah. Calm a storm. You can do it all through the name of Jesus Christ. You can do it through the name of Jesus. Somebody clap both hands together and give him praise. Join hands with somebody right now. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to do something for everybody. I pray God's going to touch you here today. That this can really be the first day of the rest of your life. If this words of this song means anything to you, perhaps it'll happen for you. When I see my brother stumble and all his dreams crumble, let me be there. For I too have Heartbreaking from a wrong turn, he's taking. Let me be there. I remember it well. Here's what I pray I want to spend my life.
I actually want to help other people? Do you see the need? Do you feel it in your heart to help somebody when they're in need around? Have you met a wounded brother that just needs your help and your concern? Today I pray you find someone. They'll save you too. When I see a life that's broken, Lord, give me words that should be spoken. For I will remember the pain. And when I see tears falling, God, remind me of my calling. Help me restore their faith again. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my whole life spend my life mending so happy to see my brother here that I have known maybe since 1961 or 62 because the truth is yesterday yesterday night not last night but the night before what do you got day before yesterday night I actually saw your face in a dream and the Lord told me, I don't know how to say this, but he's going to touch your body with complete healing today. And not only is he going to do that, I, I only say something like this, not to be a hurt, but I'm going to say, you have not lived up to your potential. But you can there's time it's not too late around you right now around your head I would say there's a halo I, that's what it looks like to me and so God sent you here today to do a miracle for you and brother Kevin and brother David and brother Ray are going to come back there and they're going to lay hands one of them is going to lay their hands right on your back another one is going to lay their hands where your lungs are and then the other one's going to lay his hand where your heart is they'll figure it out don't worry the reason is there's been a persistent pain in your back for years and it's because you've sat on drums and you've played drums and you've worked hard all your life and that weakness has gotten in to the muscles and the sinews in your back and spine and anytime the devil wants to stop you from doing anything he just brings that up again and that hurt they talk call it slip discs and sacroiliac and I don't know what all they have names for it in that area of your body but God's going to heal you completely and he's going to do a good job of it 
if they can do this by surgery, God can do it because he made those parts in there. He's got more parts than they got. They can only repair. God can replace. And God's going to do that for you here today. But also, I see an attack against your heart. You, have a, you don't have a regular heartbeat anymore. Uh, you have what they call atrial fibrillation. One part of your heart doesn't beat in sync with the other parts. And sometimes blood backs up from one valve through a valve into the other. And, uh, and when that happens, I don't know if you've been to a doctor for it, but you, just, you really just have to sit down. When that happens, until your heart stops fluttering again. Is that right? And you've never told me any of this stuff about you, but God has. God told me this day before yesterday night when I was sleeping. Uh, God told me this about you, and I also saw there's an attack now on your lungs because your heart and your lungs work together very closely, and there's a weakness there, and God's going to touch you. You look like a young man, but you're much older than you look. And I'm, 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 I'm saying this for a reason. There's nothing bad. But now, some of those old age things, the devil keeps telling you, well, this is the way you act. When uh, This is what happens when you reach this age. I'm telling you that that's a lie. The devil is lying to you, telling you that, to keep you down and to keep you from doing what you want to do. But I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, send your word to him through the hands of these men that are praying for him. Heal his back, heal his heart, touch his lungs, touch every joint in his body. Let healing from this day go forth in him. And God, don't do a miracle to him. Do a miracle through him so that everybody whose back he touches, you heal them. Everybody whose heart he touches, heal that heart. Everybody whose lungs and joints in their body, heal through him him from this very moment forward let the word of faith be in his mouth we call it done right now in the name of Jesus hallelujah everybody stand and point at him and say in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let it be so hallelujah let it be so is amen in the name of Jesus amen hallelujah there it is my brother you'll walk out of here a different man, you won't walk the same. Hallelujah. God is going to be with you.